People all over the world have been asking for an electric rear-wheel drive convertible, one they can afford. Well, it is definitely coming. It's been confirmed for Australia, for New Zealand, for a raft of other countries, the UK, Europe. This is the MG Cyberstar. It's amazing because it will be the first mass-produced rear-wheel drive electric sports car, which is a drop-top, a convertible, whatever you want to call it. And it should change the impression of EVs over much of the world, from one of environmental advocacy to one of fun and enjoyment. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel on the Electric Viking. And I'm not saying that EVs aren't fun and enjoyable. They sure as heck are. There is so many YouTube videos showing how incredibly fun and scary fast they can be. But unfortunately, the media has tried to paint this picture. They set themselves on fire. They're for people who are environmentally conscious. They will just get you from one place to another, but it won't be fun. It won't be fun, I tell you. That's the kind of image they're trying to spread. And well, one of the key reasons for that is because that enables them to continue to sell you gasoline, diesel, whatever. Who do you think pays for much of the advertising on many of these media channels? Yeah, you know exactly who. However, it's fun new cars like this that should change that perception of electric cars. I mean, there's not a lot the media can do to make this car look boring because, well, it isn't. It looks good, it's fun, and it should be relatively affordable. The 2024 MG Cyberstar electric vehicle has been revealed at its home show in Shanghai. It's confirmed for Australia, for other countries all around the world. MG is already selling electric cars in many countries across the planet. This will be yet another one. So if you can buy an MG electric car right now, wherever you live, pretty good chance you'll be able to buy one of these within the next couple of years, maybe in the next year. The Cyberstar is the first all-new MG convertible since the 1990s MGF. Now, that was back when uh, MG cars were considered a bit of a joke worldwide. They were considered to be unreliable. Then the car brand was bought by Chinese state-owned company. And this was a really smart move because people still believe that MG is a British brand. It is most certainly not. An Australian arrival for this car has apparently been locked in, but we don't know when it's gonna be. More than likely, it'll come out in Europe and UK and Australia in 2024. Prices, we don't know yet, but it's expected to cost approximately 50,000 US dollars and possibly less for the base variant. But I don't think it'll be cheap. Why? Well, why would they sell them cheaply? There's not really any competition. However, in a few years from now, there'll be plenty of affordable electric convertibles worldwide. Now, there is one in China that's incredibly popular. It's the General Motors Wuling Hongwai Mini convertible. To actually buy one of those, you have to enter a lottery to get the privilege of buying one. They cost around 14,000 US dollars. I'll put a link in the description to my video about that. The Cyberster is based on the 2021 concept car. It has low slung, two-door styling, Porsche-like headlights, LED tail lights, thin light strips, and a pretty aggressive look. I think it's got quite a classic look. Among the more eye-catching elements of the car's design are its doors, which open outwards and up in a scissor style, a lot like a Lamborghini. Now, whether or not those doors will come standard, I don't know. Hopefully they don't, because they'd be expensive to put into the car. So hopefully there's a base version with normal doors. Chinese government documents have revealed there will be a choice of black or red soft top roof designs, 19 and 20 inch alloy wheels, and exterior trim in black or silver. Inside, the driver has three screens. In fact, there's one for the driver, one in the middle of the car on the dashboard, and then one for the passenger. Now, there will be the option to get this car without the circular normal steering wheel you can see here, and with a yoke. It seems as though Tesla has inspired a bit of a strange revolution in steering wheels here. Lexus, for example, have adopted the yoke, and now MG will as well. Now, don't worry, you don't have to get the yoke. It'll be an option. And we don't know if the steering wheel will be connected to a traditional steering rack or an electric variable steer-by-wire system that's used in the Lexus vehicle. I'm going to guess that it will be a traditional steering rack because... It seems as though there's not really enough of an advantage to do what Lexus is doing. Now, with an electric steering ratio, you can actually change the ratio at low speeds to eliminate the need for hand-over-hand -hand motion, meaning quicker turns at low speeds 
and slower turning at fast speeds. It's quite an advantage in a performance car. Most important though, is it front wheel drive, rear wheel drive? How does it drive? It's rear wheel drive, just like the MG4, but there will also be an all wheel drive model. Now, this single motor version uses a 231 kilowatt electric motor. That's about 300 horsepower. The dual motor version has 250 kilowatts at the rear, so around about 340 horsepower at the rear, and 150 kilowatt motor at the front, around about a 220 horsepower motor at the front, meaning it will have a combined total power of 400 kilowatt or 600 horsepower. It'll do zero to 100 kilometers an hour or zero to 62 miles an hour in under four seconds. It's gonna be quite a fun car, I think. Now, the all-wheel drive version would be awesome because it'll have the ability to uncouple the front motor, meaning you can still do burnouts in your all-wheel drive version. You can drive it as rear-wheel drive or you can drive it as all-wheel drive. It gives you the best of both worlds. Now, there's a reason why electric manufacturers are moving to rear-wheel drive cars versus front-wheel drive cars. I made a video about that. I'll put a link to that video in the description. The Cyberstar is not a small car and not a big car. I think it's the perfect dimensions. It's a little bit shorter than a Tesla Model 3. It's 4.5 meters long, 1,913 millimeters wide, so 1.9 meters wide, pretty wide, and 1,329 millimeters tall. It has a 2.7 meter wheelbase, which means that it is 600 millimeters longer and 200 millimeters wider than a Mazda MX-5, which looks, to be honest, in my eyes, like a little bit of a toy car, or 150 millimeters longer and 100 millimeters wider than a Porsche 718 Boxster. So it's not a big car, but it's certainly not a small, no one near as small as a Mazda MX-5 or a Porsche Boxster. Weight, what does it weigh? Well, yeah, those cars are quite light. This is a bit heavier. It weighs 1,850 kilos. In the rear wheel drive version, the all wheel drive version has 1,985 kilo curb weight. So what is that in pounds? You're looking at about 4,000 pounds for the rear wheel drive version and 4,250 pounds for the all wheel drive version. Now, like I said, it's coming next year to Europe, to the UK. I'm gonna guess to Australia, New Zealand as well. We don't know where else. I'm gonna guess it'll be on sale in China pretty soon, but we haven't received any official dates. There's gonna be massive demand for this car. It's gonna sell like crazy. It'll be the first affordably priced, fun, exciting, powerful, electric convertible that goes on sale worldwide. I'm excited to see this car. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.